On Thanksgiving Day 2021, while driving from my home in Washington, D.C. to the Philadelphia suburbs for a family dinner, a souped-up pickup truck roared past me on I-95. It had temporary plates and two Marine Corps stickers, one on the rear window and one on the bumper. I thought, isn't that just like a Marine? He just bought the damn thing and it's already plastered with Marine Corps stickers. That got me thinking about the most challenging, gratifying, jaw-dropping, and frightening story I covered in my 33 years as a journalist, the slightly less than six weeks I spent embedded with 3rd Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, 3-5 for short, during the invasion of Iraq in 2003 as a correspondent for NBC News. For years I had thought that one day I would escape the journalism rat race and write a book, but I hadn't settled on a topic. That's it, I thought, as the pickup disappeared out of sight, for the 20th anniversary of Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2023, I would write a book about the Marines of 3-5. As I drove, I thought of questions I wanted to ask them. Where are they today, and what are they doing? Do they have families? How did their lives change due to their first combat experience? It was the first combat for almost all of them. What did they learn as Marines that helped them prosper in civilian life? Did they struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD? What do they think about the war today? When I returned home, I reached out to some of the Marines I had occasionally stayed in touch with and started asking questions. I found their stories fascinating and powerful, and they were eager to tell them. They clearly did not want their service and their sacrifice to be forgotten. At first, I thought I could get a good cross-section with about a dozen Marines, but word spread about my project and requests to be included started pouring in. Eventually, I interviewed more than 40 Marines, plus several wives and grown children, whose experiences and insights were often as engrossing as those of the Marines. Almost all the interviews were done over Zoom and were professionally transcribed so that I could be sure to quote my interviewees accurately. A few chose to write their answers and email them to me. I have extensively quoted from the interviews and emails because I think it's important to hear their stories in their own words.